Video 2, Module View, Instruments, Effects, and Settings. Hello. In this tutorial, we will explore the features of the module view a little more deeply, and you will become familiar with some of the basics of digital signal processing. Let's load up our previous project by clicking on the icon in the top left corner. Choose Load Project, and select the project which you saved from the last lesson. If we select the analog generator in the module view, we can have a look at its parameters on the left side. From this panel, we can tweak our module. Let's click on the letter V to resize the panel. As I already pointed out, this module is actually an oscillator. An oscillator is, most of the time, the core of an instrument called a synthesizer. The task of a synthesizer is to electronically create a sound from scratch. Typically, in a synthesizer, it is possible to set the waveform produced by the oscillator, set the amplitude envelope of the waveform playback, and to filter the resulting sound. With the waveform slider, we can set the kind of oscillation produced by our analog generator. This is then displayed at the bottom of the panel view. We can choose between triangular, saw, square, among others, and different colors of noise. But we can also draw our own custom waveforms by selecting Draw, and then with a finger, draw a new waveform on the display itself. For some purposes, it's acceptable to have a sound that immediately plays at full volume when a key is pressed, and instantly drops to silence when you release it. In most cases, however, we do need a little more control. The red sliders define parameters that pertain to the envelope generator. An envelope generator is a modulator that changes a parameter over time to control the amplitude of the signal. Our envelope has four stages. Attack, which dictates how long the sound takes to go from silence to maximum level. Release, which measures the time the envelope takes to return to zero after the finger is withdrawn from the key. Sustain, which can be set to either on or off and which allows us to prolong the sound. And finally, the exponential switch, through which it is possible to modify the slope of the envelope. We can make our oscillator sound richer by adding a second frequency using slider number 9. Blue sliders represent the filter's commands. A filter is a circuit that reduces the level of certain parts of the frequency spectrum. The filter type can be chosen via this slider, and it's possible to choose between low pass, high pass, band pass, or band reject. The filter frequency, or cutoff frequency, is the frequency at which the filter starts to reduce the signal level. Resonance feeds some of the filter output back into its own input, altering the shape of the filter and producing a boost around the cutoff frequency. It is even possible to set a dedicated envelope for the filter. By double-clicking on the module view, we bring up a list with all the available devices. As you can see, they are sorted into categories. All devices comprised under the synths category are meant to produce sound according to different methodologies. Those listed under effects are meant to affect and modify the sound produced by a synthesizer. Let's choose delay as an example. Now we can connect it to our oscillator. The task of a delay, as its name suggests, is to delay a sound by a certain amount of time. Let's now tweak our delay. The two sliders labeled dry and wet are common to all the effects. Wet defines the amount of synthesizer signal affected by the delay process. 
In contrast, dry represents the amount of signal that will pass through the effect without being modified. The red sliders represent by how much the sound of the oscillator will be delayed. You can set these values independently for the left and right channels. And you can also choose how the delay line's lengths are measured, whether in milliseconds, hertz, or ticks. For an exhaustive explanation of all the available synths and effects, I would suggest you read the software manual available at the link found in the description. Let's now save our project so we can use it for our next tutorial.